Walter, one primary characteristic of religions I like to put to theologians, and that is the incredible diversity of religion in the world. Not just uh, uh, religious differences, but absolute contradictions between religious groups and what the implications. Some would say, well, you know, they all sort of are speaking about the same thing, but just in, in different ways. How, how do you view that? Uh, I don't think they're talking about the same thing in different ways. Of course, there's a level at which it's the same thing. It's like if you and I both looked out into the backyard and we both said, there's an animal in the backyard and I think it's an elephant and you think it's a mouse. Well, maybe we're both right, but we can't both be talking about the same animal. It can't be experiences of the same God when the features that we ascribe to that God are so different and even incompatible, as you said. So, I mean, let's, let's look at some of these. Now, we can compare groups like, like Hinduism and uh, the Abrahamic religions and, and uh, uh, perhaps aspects of Buddhism. Uh, Hinduism may have multiple gods. A Buddhism may have really no god but sort of a cosmic consciousness. And, of course, we have a, 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 a very personal god in the Abrahamic uh, religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Uh, are, are these so incompatible? And if, if they are, what does that mean? Well, sure, I would think the multiple religion, the multiple gods in Hinduism are incompatible with there being a single god in the Abrahamic religions. And as I understand Hinduism, and I'm no Hinduism scholar, uh, but there's no claim that those gods are all powerful and all good and so on. That's, you know, that makes the Abrahamic religions an elephant against their mouse. And so it strikes me as a very different type of god. Uh, how about within religious groups itself? Uh, 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 most religions are, are, are quite known for splitting into splinters of splinters of splinters in terms of beliefs and right. argument over what may seem to be very arcane doctrines have caused great, uh, great controversy. Uh, how, how does that affect one's uh, uh, sense of the whole system? Oh, it, it's very important. The splits within Christianity are the ones I know best, but uh, when Calvinists said there was no free will, people were, were predestined in various ways. Many people said, well, they're not Christians at all at this point because Christians have to believe in free will. Or when fundamentalists say every word of the Bible is true, and other people say, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't think every word is true, like those words about how you can have slaves and ought to kill non-believers who try to convert you and so on. Uh, then the fundamentalists say, well, then you're not really Christians. You're just you know, some other kind of pseudo-Christian, but not a real Christian. Well, if they're really going to treat those splinter groups within their own religions uh, as not really truly believing in the, in the true God, then I don't see how they can say that, you know, Buddhists and Shinto, not to mention ancient Greek religions, are all trying to point to the same God. Well, religions have a problem. They have a problem of either saying that we're the only right one, everybody else is wrong, everybody else is going to hell, which seems to be a almost self-invalidating uh, argument, because if you say that, even if you believe it, then it's, it's, it sounds so absurd that nobody will begin to, you know, like you or follow you or something else. So that's a real problem. On the other hand, if you, if you have this uh, uh, compatibility that you're trying to kind of uh, syncretize all religions in a general way, it just seems to, to, to gloss over the real doctrinal beliefs that they have. Well, I mean, that's an interesting sociological claim. I don't know whether it's true that people won't like you when you say, if you believe something else, then you're going to hell. Let's look at which religions have been successful in the United States recently. Some of them are the most extreme forms of evangelicalism, which have hell houses and say that if you believe these other doctrines, you are going to hell. Uh, those are the ones that seem to be thriving. So you might be right, but it'd be an interesting empirical question to see which kinds of religions thrive and which don't. I, I, you know, I absolutely agree with you. I, I, what, what, I guess I was reflecting kind of a bias of the kinds of friends that I have who would yeah. be embarrassed to say that. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, I, I think it's a fact that the religions that are more doctrinaire, that set a more authoritarian view of things, that, 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 that are, are, are the ones that are likely to be better at proselytizing because right. that people have more of a motivation to, to join yeah. them. I mean, just imagine you're trying to convert somebody to your brand of Christianity, and you turn to them and you say, well, 
what do you believe? And you say, well, I believe Christianity too, but this slightly different form. And they go, oh, well, that's okay, but I wish you'd believe my kind. That's not much of an argument. But if you go, oh, you're going to hell unless you believe this, they might have a little more luck in converting you. So as you would look at the uh, diversity of religions in the world, uh, uh, how strong an argument is that, in your opinion, for the invalidation of the total mass of it? Well, I think it's a, it's a very strong argument against certain types of arguments. It rebuts certain types of arguments. Like an argument from religious experience, the variety really undercuts that one. I mean, if we're both looking at the same animal and, you know, I think it's a deer and you think it's a bear and we both are, have equally good vision, there's no reason to suspect that one of us is just better at zoological classifications, then, uh, probably we ought to suspend belief until we find out more information. And you can't just trust that immediate experience. Uh, but other types of arguments, it might have no effect on whatsoever. If you really had a cosmological argument about the origin of the universe and could prove that God had to be there to create the universe, uh, Shiva's not going to do it for you uh, okay. in the Hindu religion. Uh, probably, I would assume, if it's based on the Big Bang or something like that, like contemporary evangelicals. You need a really strong guy. You need a really, you need an elephant. You're not going to do with a mouse. 